All right. So, hello everyone. My name is uh, Prashant Mishra. I am a technical consultant with Google. I work with uh, the top companies and top sites in India on improving their web properties and on uh, implementation of uh, Fugu APIs and, and technologies like AMP, PWA, and TWAs. The title of my talk is AMP as PWA as TWA. Uh, apologies for uh, using a lot of acronyms. It's perfectly fine if you are not familiar with uh, any of these. We will be uh, sort of introducing to most of these term, uh, terminologies. Uh, basically, the idea of this talk is that we write code once using uh, AMP, which is Accelerated Mobile uh, Platform. Uh, and uh, thereafter, uh, uh, we add uh, the PWA. Um, uh, something called service worker again we will be covering uh, these in details in the following slides and then uh, we can eventually wrap up uh, that code uh, uh, using uh, a special activity called trusted web activity and we can get a apk out of it and this can be deployed in google play so as opposed to uh, traditional development uh, we are probably writing a much lesser code so uh, as I uh, sort of just explained, this is how the today's agenda uh, agenda looks like. Uh, so basically, we will start with uh, introduction of AMP and PWA. We will discuss AMP as PWA. Then we will uh, uh, look at some of the code snippets, uh, like how can we take an AMP page and how can we uh, get a PWA out of it, what are the potential benefits. We will be covering uh, those aspects. And thereafter, I will be introducing, uh, uh, I will be giving an introduction of TWA and eventually wrapping uh, the web code, which is the PWA code uh, as TWA. Uh, so let's introduce uh, uh, AMP, uh, Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, so, so basically, uh, uh, an average uh, web page, right? Uh, average regular web page that is probably not very fast. If we look at uh, the data uh, uh, which HTTP archive is sharing, then as per uh, that, uh, uh, an average uh, page was weighing uh, more than 700 KB uh, in 2010, and it jumped to over 3 MB in 2017. And I think it is uh, growing uh, ever since. Uh, if we double click on these numbers, right? Uh, uh, let's take 3 MB, which was getting, uh, which was the uh, the size of the payload in 2017. Uh, so why it was uh, as large as 3 MB? Uh, uh, the main reason was that uh, it was using a lot of scripts, which is JavaScript and CSS, and also it was uh, uh, using a lot of heavy images. So these three uh, uh, components were the primary reason why uh, the regular web page was uh, slow and also i mean it has to do a lot with uh, the way the pages are implemented so even if uh, uh, even if uh, say the javascripts are lightweight and images are lightweight and uh, say uh, there are a lot of calls required for uh, getting some critical content on the page so uh, the network latency will play a role here and eventually the uh, 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 like the first uh, meaningful paint and the uh, largest contentful paint, these uh, things will be happening a lot later. So how uh, accelerated mobile pages are solving this problem is, first of all, uh, AMP uh, uses a lot lesser uh, JavaScript and CSS. Uh, the JavaScript that we have in AMP uh, are uh, modular. So as you can see, this is uh, uh, v0.js. And then for every major component, there will be a separate JS file. So it ensures that we are not uh, bundling the page with a lot of unnecessary JavaScript, which is uh, uh, traditionally uh, a problem with regular web pages. And also it uh, uses out of the box a lot of optimizations and uh, best, practice, uh, best uh, practices. For example, the images and the ads, which are not on the fold, uh, they are not uh, loaded. So they are loaded uh, when the user is likely going to see it. 
so thus offering a very good perceived speed uh, while putting uh, a lot of optimizations in practice. A few features uh, of AMP. So essentially, um, uh, it does the smart uh, content prioritization. Uh, it doesn't do any re, uh, uh, re uh, layouts. Uh, it does asynchronous loading. It repitches uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, critical elements. Uh, out of these, uh, 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 I mean, let me double click on relayout. So again, relayout is a problem uh, with uh, regular pages uh, because uh, like there are many popular websites where there are uh, more than 5,000 DOM nodes in a page. And uh, then when the page is uh, uh, loading, then during the course of rendering, uh, basically styles are applied and styles are uh, are changed uh, at the uh, root of the tree. So DOM is essentially and also the CSS object model is like a tree. So essentially what is happening is that uh, for a very big page having a lot of nodes, if uh, changes are being made at the root level or at a high, higher level, then the children will be inheriting those properties and that's why a lot of recalculation will be happening. And this is what uh, will be affecting uh, metrics like uh, first input delay and uh, and also it will uh, impact the uh, largest contentful paint. So this is not a problem with uh, AMP, it is solved out of the box. Uh, further, it is using uh, responsive design. So uh, the, the page is responsive. And also you can use a responsive image, uh, images that support uh, source set. So uh, so on a lower resolution uh, screen, you can download uh, uh, images which are lighter. And also uh, the user experience of AMP is good. No external JavaScript is allowed unless you are using components like AMP iframe and AMP script. These components uh, comes with uh, their own restrictions. Uh, and the restrictions are put in place in order to ensure that uh, the pages are performing well. Also, there is a limitation on uh, uh, style sheet. It's, it used to be 50 KB, now it is 75 KB. Uh, 75 KB is uh, uh, more than sufficient for most of the implementations. And this is the amount of style sheet uh, uh, we will be able to inline uh, in, an, in an AMP page. So how it all works together. So how a AMP page is served? Uh, let's talk about that. So uh, basically on, on the origin, on your servers, you will be implementing page using AMP HTML. And uh, uh, basically the origin will be serving AMP HTML. Uh, AMP HTML will be cached by AMP caches. So AMP caches are nothing but uh, content delivery networks. So uh, they will be serving content from a location which is closer to uh, the user's location. Uh, hence, uh, uh, they will be minimizing uh, the network latency and uh, the content will be de delivered faster. And uh, uh, then uh, there are many platforms like Google Search, uh, which supports AMP. So uh, these uh, platforms pre-render the page in a privacy preserving way. So, uh, so the critical assets of the page will be downloaded even before the user clicks on that page and the page will be rendered in a privacy preserving uh, way. And as soon as the user clicks on the page, uh, uh, it will, uh, the page will get rendered uh, very soon. Uh, so the average uh, uh, time, uh, the average duration which is required for the page load, the median duration is uh, less than a second for AMP pages. And this is far more, many times more for uh, regular pages. In uh, Google search, the AMP pages are, uh, are shown with a lightning bolt symbol, as you can see on the uh, right, screen, uh, right screenshot. Uh, and uh, as I just described, they will be pre-rendered and they will be rendering very soon. Um, also on the supported platform, you will find uh, a lightning uh, symbol denoting that the, the pages are AMP pages. So as I briefly talked, uh, the median uh, page load time of AMP pages from Google search is less than a second. It uses quite less amount of data as compared to its 
non amp counterparts and uh, uh, amp is widely adopted so within 2 years of its launch uh, uh, by october 2017 there were already 4 billion amp pages published across 25 million domains and i think the uh, number is growing now the number would be much much larger so uh, let's talk about uh, uh, something called linked amp pages and let's compare that approach with amp as pwa so uh, linked amp pages is the most common practice which uh, publishers over the globe they are following for publishing the amp pages so what uh, uh, the publishers are doing in this approach is that there would be a page which would be a non amp page uh, so they are the traditional pages which are developed using uh, standard cms or uh, their inbuilt uh, platforms and thereafter uh, uh, another page which is an amp equivalent of that non amp page would be generated and both of these page the non amp page and the amp page will be linked using which is a canonical link so what it signifies is that uh, the amp page would be serving the same information which is uh, present in the non amp page so that requires a duplicate development because uh, for every page there are two copies one is non amp and one is uh, amp and um, in in platforms like google search google uh, search will be uh, trumping uh, uh, basically amp will be trumping the non amp page in google search uh, due to this canonical link uh, so so most of the traffic will be most of the at least the organic traffic will be going to the uh, amp page uh, so uh, how this compares with an approach like uh, amp as pwa so we will be de developing just a single copy of the page using amp html and then we will be adding the pwa features on the amp page pages itself so there won't be uh, uh, won't be a canonical link pointing back to any parent page uh, just a single copy of the page will be uh, generated one caveat here is that uh, the amp features won't kick in uh, when the users are uh, on uh, on uh, on google search basically the features will just kick in when the pages are uh, served from the origin uh, and i think that should be okay in in most of the cases because uh, uh, when the user lands on your page you will probably anyways redirect the user to your domain or uh, they will be coming uh, probably they will be coming directly to your domain and hence that is where uh, the pwf uh, functionalities will kick in and uh, add to home screen and like other features can be leveraged there now uh, a progressive web apps uh, many of us may not be familiar with uh, progressive web apps so uh, for the benefit of everyone let me quickly go through uh, some of the associated uh, concepts uh, so so uh, the flow uh, on the top of the slide that is uh, the way a vanilla website a regular website which is not a pwa that interacts with uh, the web server uh for getting the assets and for getting the responses of the web servers uh so the calls are made directly to the web server uh, which is the origin and the response comes and the page renders uh with the progressive web app we get uh, uh, something called service worker which is a client side proxy written in javascript uh this is installed on the device and uh, this uh, uh acts in between uh, the the browser and the caches and the web server as it is shown in the diagram and this is completely programmable uh, depending on the business logic the developers can program it uh, so one benefit here would be that uh, think of a scenario when uh, the network is flaky uh, or the network is not available in that case uh, the vanilla experience that will show a down or sore because uh, the the server is not available uh and hence uh, uh, the client cannot receive the response and that is where uh, chrome will be sh uh, showing a down assur uh, in the experience which is there uh, on uh, the uh, progressive web app uh, the service worker will be intercepting such requests and that is where we can program the logic that if network is not available show a stale copy of the page 
or show a banner piece saying that the network is not available, try after some time. And then we can implement a logic in the banner page, which will check for the uh, connection of availability. We can register the, uh, the associated event listeners. And that is where, as soon as the connection is available, we can probably refresh the page and uh, the user will be able to browse the site again. Also, there can be some uh, endpoints uh, which we, we would want to uh, want to serve uh, online, like uh, a service response, which is very dynamic in nature. So that is not something which we would want to cache anyways. So uh, we can again program the service worker to not intercept that URL routes and uh, just go to the uh, the uh, the server uh, for that URL routes. So uh, another uh, key feature of Progressive Web App is that uh, it is re-engaging. Uh, so, so the user lands on the uh, on the home page. Uh, user gets a home screen pop-up if the criteria is met. Uh, if the user accepts the pop-up, uh, then uh, the application will be installed on the device, just like any regular uh, application that a user may have installed. Uh, when the user launch it, uh, launches the application from the home screen icon, then a full uh, full screen activity will, will be launched. So here. Uh, uh, you can customize the splash screen. You can uh, put a different icon or you can put a different theme color in the background, which matches with your original theme uh, color. So this, uh, this is customizable. And uh, thereafter, uh, the user will be able to browse the site in, uh, in a full screen view. Uh, now, if we add uh, various focal capabilities, which have been discussed in the previous talks today, then uh, probably we are bridging the uh, the gap between the uh, the native experience and the web experience and just this uh, this lighter experience uh, would be very powerful in most of the cases uh, this uh, 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 content we have i think covered briefly uh, but uh, uh, since we have installed the service worker and since we are intercepting all the requests which are originating uh, originating from the client uh, hence, we can avoid showing the downloader, which is uh, the screen on the left. Uh, and then, uh, as I described, uh, the service worker is completely programmable. So you can look at the experience on the uh, right. Uh, when the network is not available, the user is still able to browse certain categories. They are able to select a certain product. They are able to go to the pro product description page. They cannot obviously check out the product because the network isn't available. But uh, with service worker, uh, we can write a logic like like the one which is shown on the right, where we can um, uh, catch the content uh, of various pages and various user flows. Uh, PWAs are re-engaging with the web push notifications. So these are system level notifications like the native applications. And uh, they can be used even when uh, the br browser is not open or when your site is not in focus because the service uh, worker will be installed on the device and it can wake up for receiving the notification and it, it can pass on the notification uh, to the user. And again, this logic is uh, completely customizable. Uh, you can group the notifications and uh, you can show multiple notifications so uh, basically, all this logic can be developer driven. So uh, taking all these features together, we get uh, something called progressive web apps, uh, uh, which is uh, seamless and which works across variety of the network. Uh, so like in short, we have taken the regular web, uh, web code and we have added additional capabilities, service workers, push notifications and things like that. And this is what we call progressive web app. Uh, I want to quickly talk about a case study uh, which Flipkart published with us in 2016. So they were uh, one of the early uh, adopters of PWA, and they saw 3x more time spent on the site, 40% higher re-engagement, and 70% greater conversion for the uh, for the users who were coming via Act to Home Screen. Now, uh, we have discussed about AMP and we have discussed about PWA. Uh, let's uh, talk in detail what uh, what AMP as PWA is. 
So basically, uh, we take the AMP code, we add the service worker, and this service worker can be as small as just a single line of JavaScript code. And uh, we get a progressive web app. So uh, this app can respond, uh, this app can work in flaky networks. Even if the network is offline, the content will be rendered and the dinosaur won't be shown. So now uh, we can uh, take a look at uh, some code snippets, uh, like how can we uh, uh, take a regular ramp page and how can we add the service worker to convert it into uh, AMP as PWA. So uh, this is how a simple vanilla AMP HTML looks like. You can uh, check the second line. It is HTML AMP. So this AMP attribute there signifies that this is not vanilla HTML, rather it is AMP HTML. And then uh, we will have to import this script, which is AMP install service worker. Uh, this uh, AMP, uh, this script will enable a component called AMP install service worker, which we will be using for uh, installing the service worker. Uh, let's uh, let's look into detail, like how can we implement uh, this component and various flavors in which we can imp uh, implement this component. So this is how uh, one one of the simplest implementations will look like. You will simply use this component, AMP install service worker. You will point to a JavaScript uh, on your domain uh, where the logic of the service worker would be written. And uh, as I described, it can be as small as just a single line of code. Uh, let's uh, double click at the logic of uh, this service worker.js. Uh, so, so you can use uh, the AMP service worker code. So this is a out of the box uh, script which uh, AMP project is providing. Uh, and uh, a lot of logic which uh, uh, a lot of sites will be needed that is already implemented inside this uh, uh, this file, uh, this is script. And we can simply use a single line of code, uh, which is amp service worker dot in it. And we are done. Uh, we have added the service worker in the code. Uh, it will be working offline. Uh, and now, now it's a PWA. So it is as simple as that. Uh, for those of you who noticed that it was not one line of code, rather it was two lines of code. Uh, in JavaScript, we can just bundle these two statements together using the ampersand operator, and now it is just a single line of code. Uh, and we are just done with a simple uh, uh, PWA, which is ready to go. Now, uh, we can customize this logic. We can uh, use additional options like asset caching option. So here, for example, I'm putting a regex uh, where I, I would want to go cache first for any URL pattern which is matching with uh, PNG or JPEG because these are images and uh, if they are cached, we do not want to make a network call. And uh, that resonates with the data that HTTP archive uh, shared. So most of the uh, pages payload was images and JavaScript. Uh, but the major section was still images. Also, we can specify a custom offline uh, page, uh, something like the site is offline, is retry, or and any custom uh, page can be specified using uh, uh, offline page options. And you can refer to this link here for uh, further options. And like there are a lot of customizations which are possible uh, using AMP Service Worker. Now, uh, if we want, we can implement a completely custom service worker. We need not uh, uh, stick with uh, the uh, the service worker which AMP project is providing. We can simply write something from scratch on our own. For that, we will have to use this attribute called data iframe source, and this will point to a HTML code, uh, and uh, uh, that is where we can write the logic of installing the service worker and handling various events. Uh, let's check at uh, one of the sample implementations of this service worker.html. So uh, here we are checking if uh, the service worker is supported uh, in, in the browser. If you remember, we did not do such checks in the, uh, the, in the AMP service worker implementation because these all were done for us out of the box. 
but if we are implementing it on our own then we will have to uh, do, uh, do these checks so if the service worker is supported then we will register the service worker we'll simply point to the service worker script uh, and after that the service worker will be registered we will also check out the logic which is implemented inside this service worker.js also we can uh, uh, implement uh, uh, additional uh, event listeners like before install foam so uh, there can be uh, various use cases because at times you may want to customize uh, the point in time where the at home screen is uh, prompt is shown because you may not want to show it uh, as soon as the user lands on your website because probably they are not familiar with your website and they will probably decline it anyways so you can uh, implement a logic where you can defer this prompt uh, so various uh, event listeners can uh, can be implemented depending on the custom logic uh, that you are implementing uh, now, uh, let us talk about the core logic of the service worker, which uh, we would be uh, implementing, the custom logic that we would be implementing. So this is how our service worker.js looks like. In this demo, I have used uh, Workbox for uh, generating this uh, service worker. So Workbox is a tool where you would be writing a Workbox build script. You will uh, specify the rules that uh, this URL pattern should be uh, should be cached and there are various inbuilt strategies which you, which you, you can use in workbox it can be very easily integrated in your ci cd pipeline uh, so for example here i am specifying a pre cache manifest so this news.png is likely an image which will be uh, used by the user which will be seen by the user very soon after the page is rendered and probably it, it it's a good idea to cache it uh, uh, now you may not want to pre-cache something which is immediately on that page uh, because uh, there is a delay uh, after the page loads and after uh, I mean there is a delay between the service worker is, is installed and uh, uh, when the page loads. So typically we register the service worker on um, on page load and this is what that component will be doing. So, but if there is a subsequent route, uh, any next page where the user is likely to go, so those sort of assets can be pre-cached. And you can see a revision number here. So when this uh, news.png is updated, uh, the, the revision number will be uh, uh, changed automatically if you have integrated uh, uh, Workbox in your uh, CI pipeline. It supports uh, various build tools like uh, uh, like a lot of common build tools are supported and again it's a CLI script uh, uh, which can be integrated in uh, remaining uh, build tools uh, I think uh, webpack supports it and like, supported by two three most common uh, build tools so now we can uh, specify the rules uh, the caching rules for various UR parameters uh, if uh, we can specify the cache, uh, uh, the custom cache name where uh, where we would want to cache these static resources and things like that. Uh, so this all logic is customizable and uh, uh, and like depending on the exact business requirement, we can implement a service worker here. Also, uh, you need not stick with uh, Workbox for implementing the service worker, but this is something which is recommended because that solves a lot of problem which you may face otherwise. Uh, you can also implement service worker from scratch using vanilla JavaScript, even that is possible, but that is a bit more complex. So now let us look at uh, AMP SPWA in, in action. So uh, the AMP site loads, uh, there is a prompt, user accepts it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, add, the icon is added to the home screen like any native application and then the user can launch uh, uh, the application from the home screen uh, and they can simply view it in a, a full screen activity. Now, what is AMP SPWA, SDWA? We talked about AMP SPWA. Essentially, it's a web code, right? It is written in AMP with some added PWA capabilities. Uh, now, uh, what is trusted web activity? So trusted web activity is a, uh, is a special activity which is built uh, using uh, the protocol uh, uh, which is based on Chrome custom tabs. Uh, uh, so uh, basically TWA can be used for uh, 
wrapping your uh, your web code as an apk and that will be launched in a full screen uh, activity and uh, that will be able to leverage your uh, the service worker it will be able to prefetch resources uh, it will work offline uh, it will support native uh, uh, web push notifications also the fugu apis will be supported so uh, so basically uh, if we just uh, uh, sort of uh retreat on the key points right we uh, wrote code using amp bundle that as a pwa bundle that as as uh, an apk using trusted web activity now it is on the play store and the user can get a very fast and light user experience so we have written just a single code uh, which uh, which which can be installed uh, as a native application and as a web application and hence probably we are reducing a lot of uh, uh, additional work which would have been required otherwise if we were writing different codes for all all these uh, different platforms and uh, so uh, basically uh, i will be covering uh, uh, about the trusted web activity in a lot more details in the coming session um, i will be uh, like we will be going uh through the uh, required tooling uh, and also there is a demo uh, where we will generate uh, uh twa in in uh, in less than 2 minutes uh, so uh thank you for joining me for this talk and uh, please stay tuned for the next talk which is all about web in google play where we will take a deeper dive at the twa's implementation and we will also see a success story about the trusted web activity so thank you all thank you all for joining me